or we were ordered to have been invited by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade of the Republic of Zimbabwe to observe these elections. As I stated at our arrival press conference, we are here as friends of Zimbabwe. And it's my hope that our presence affirms the unwavering support of the Commonwealth family to this country and its people as it seeks to consolidate its democratic values. These same values are held dear by the Commonwealth. Values of peace, democracy, the rule of law, and good governance. We arrived in Harare on the 16th of August and have engaged in a wide range of stakeholders, consultations, and briefings, including the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, ZEC, the flag bearers and party representatives of several political parties, as well as an independent candidate. We also met the Commissioner General of Police, representatives of civil society, citizen observers, faith-based organizations, women's groups, youth, the media, the business community, the Commonwealth Local Government Forum, and Commonwealth Ambassadors. On the 21st of August, our team our team was deployed to Harare Metropolitan Province, Bulawayo Metropolitan Province, Masvingo, Midlands, Matabele North, Matabele South, Mashona Land East, and Manika Land. In these locations, we observed the pre election environment and preparations for the poll. We visited several polling stations in different constituencies and met voters, provincial, district, and poll station electoral officials, as well as political parties, the police, civil society, and others, to gain a deeper appreciation of the electoral processes from the, from the foundational unit of the elections. We also liaised with citizen observers and other international observers in these locations. Before I proceed to outline our key findings, let me also convey our group's intention to fully assess in our final report, the level of implementation of recommendations proposed by the 2018 Commonwealth Observer Group to the harmonized elections of that year and reflect carefully on the way forward. On the electoral process, from our own observations, there was a peaceful pre-election atmosphere. Throughout the voting process, we met professional, diligent, and friendly election officials and security officers. We observed that voters' lists were visible, well-placed, of high quality, and arranged in alphabetical order. They were accessible at polling stations, all of which made identification of voters easier than would have been. We sensed a strong feeling of excitement among all the people we interacted with. We learned about the death of an opposition supporter earlier this month from a number of stakeholders, as, well, as was confirmed by the Commissioner General of Police, who advised that an investigation is still underway. We hope that there will be an expeditious and just outcome to this investigation. In terms of equitable media coverage of all political parties and actors, the group notes with a bit of concern on the electoral process, from our own observations, there was a peaceful pre-election atmosphere. Throughout the voting process, we met professional, diligent, and friendly election officials and security officers. We observed that voters' lists were visible, well-placed, of high quality, and arranged in alphabetical order. They were accessible at polling stations, all of which made identification of voters easier than would have been. We sensed a strong feeling of excitement among all the people we interacted with. We learned about the death of an opposition supporter earlier this month from a number of stakeholders, 
as well as was confirmed by the Commissioner General of Police, who advised that an investigation is still underway. We hope that there will be an expeditious and just outcome to this investigation. In terms of equitable media coverage of all political parties and actors, the group notes with a bit of concern that there is still room for much improvement in leveling the playing field. It was noteworthy that several mechanisms to deal with election disputes are in place, including the electoral courts. And although there have been reports that national level multi-party liaison communities, committees have had limited success in resolving uh, disputes than we would have expected. Prior to election day, the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission had provided various assurances of its preparedness and readiness to conduct the elections as scheduled. However, on election day, the late opening of polls due to the late arrival of ballot papers in the major urban areas of Harare and Bulawayo raised concerns and heightened tensions. We note that these areas represent a significant proportion of the overall population. And while we were informed of Zek's explanation regarding challenges with logistics and the impact of late court cases, we would welcome a more detailed explanation from Zek in the coming days, and we will further reflect on this matter in our final report, which remains a matter of concern to all of us. Election day proceeded in an atmosphere of relative peace and calm, and we observed that the turnout of and we observed the turnout of many voters, especially women and youth. We felt that this was testimony to the desire of all Zimbabweans to make their voices heard and contribute to the country's ongoing democratic consolidation. We commend highly the people of Zimbabwe for the enthusiasm and largely peaceful approach in the exercise of their franchise. Greater information sharing by institutions and stakeholders, in particular ZEC, on all aspects of, ele of the electoral process, including on the issue of voter roll, would improve transparency and trust. We observed and received various reports that an NGO called Forever Associate Zimbabwe, FAS, had set up exit poll survey tables in close proximity to polling stations and had governing party regalia. From our briefings with other civil society organizations and stakeholders, it was made clear that exit polling is currently not permitted within the legal framework of Zimbabwe. Let me now turn to each of the key areas of the electoral process in a little more detail. On the overall pre-election environment, we note that these elections were conducted against the background of, of a peace pledge agreed by political parties, as well as conflict resolution and prevention mechanisms, including the multi-party liaison committees. We also note that these elections were characterized by a number of legal challenges, several of which were unresolved by election day and remain unresolved today. We'll comment on this in our final report. It was commendable that political parties and other stakeholders committed to peaceful elections by signing the peace pledge on the 4th of August 2023. I love the commitment of all Zimbabweans in ensuring that election day proceeded largely peacefully and urge all political parties and their supporters to honor this pledge in the coming days and to use available legal means for any conflict resolution. Although this was the third election organized by an independent election management body, ZEC, we note that a combination of legislative and administrative reforms would be needed to improve its performance. Recalling the Commonwealth Observer Group report of Zimbabwe's 2018 harmonized elections, stakeholders once again expressed the view that ZEC could have done more to build trust and instill confidence in the electoral process through effective communication 
and a better information flow. We'll provide a detailed assessment of this also in our final report. The legal framework. The legal and electoral framework, primarily the 2013 Constitution of the Republic of Zimbabwe as amended, the Electoral Act Chapter 213 as amended, provide the basic legal conditions for credible and peaceful elections. We note that since the 2018 elections, amendments were made to the legal framework with legislation such as, with legislation such as the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act enacted in 2019, which replaced the previous Public Order and Security Act. This new legislation has had an impact on the electoral landscape. The enactment of new laws or amendments six months prior to the harmonized elections was raised as an issue by stakeholders who felt it created an uncertain legal environment in terms of interpretation of the law. This includes the Criminal Law, <coughs> Codification and Reform Amendment Act, or the Patriotic Act, as it's commonly known, as well as the private voluntary organization, Your Bill, which though not yet enacted, was de facto being applied. Independence of ZEC. Stakeholders expressed concern over the appointment of ZEC commissioners and the Secretariat, and a suggested lack of independence of ZEC, particularly in relation to, to its own Secretariat and the relationship between the Secretariat and the public. It was felt strongly that public confidence in ZEC needs strengthening. The significant increase in nomination fees was reported to us by most stakeholders as an obstacle. The group was advised that the hike in nomination fees had proved a barrier to nomination, most acutely amongst women, amongst young people, and persons with disabilities, who are, in fact, the majority of voters in this country. We were informed that the exercise of border delimitation was conducted without a published final census report, and there could be wide discrepancies between the number of voters in constituencies. We will assess this aspect in greater detail in our final report. On the voters' role, though it was available to parties and candidates, we were told that there was a lack of clarity as to how voters would determine where they could vote. We also observed that party agents did not have copies of the voter roll for their respective stations, indicating that parties and candidates could not inform and remind voters of their polling stations to promote a better turnout on election day. We also observed that the names of some voters who had confirmed their polling station via mobile phone using the SMS call provided by ZEC did not appear on the list on the election day. Accreditation, and uh, I'll begin with the media. We note concerns raised about the so-called double accreditation process for the media, whereby Zimbabwe journalists already accredited with ZMC were required to pay an additional $10 uh, to accredit with ZEC to observe the elections and gain access to elections-related information or events. The cost of the double accreditation for international media houses which should cover the election was regarded for local and international media houses which should cover this, the election were, was regarded as prohibitive. Additionally, it was noted that several journalists from foreign media houses were denied accreditation, notably the Voice of America, South Africa's Daily Maverick, and ARD of Germany. The campaign. In briefings, it was alleged that for those campaign rallies that were denied by Zimbabwean police, they had made selective use of the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act of 2019, and that this selective use created an unlevel playing field. However, the police stated in our meeting with them that there were legitimate reasons for rallies being denied, such as failure to meet certain criteria. The group will address this issue in more detail in its final report. 
Mainstream media, radio, television, and newspapers remain the most important communication channels to inform the electorate about the policies and platforms of political parties and candidates running for office. It is therefore essential that media present at all viewpoints during the campaign so that they can make and so that voters can make an informed choice. I'll read that again. It's therefore essential that media is present at all viewpoints during a campaign so that voters can make an informed choice. Stakeholders reiterated concerns about state media bias favoring the governing party. Political parties indeed noted that although airtime was made available, many media outlets required payment of for slots, which proved unaffordable. This imbalance in coverage started well before the campaign began. The group notes that once the president had presented election proclamation, the, the election proclamation date, the ZMC cedes control of media regulation, which then falls under the electoral legal framework, including, but not limited to, the Constitution, the Electoral Act, Media Regulation Statute Instrument 33 of 2008. The group noted that the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, ZEC, established a media monitoring committee to monitor the coverage of the elections. The committee is chaired by the ZEC and comprises the Zimbabwe Media Commission and the Broadcasting Authority of Zimbabwe. WhatsApp dominated the rapid spread of disinformation during the 2023 elections, with the app's inscription and closed group functionality making mis- and disinformation harder for fact-checking organizations such as Zimfa to counter. Participation and inclusion. In the presidential election, the group notes there were four women candidates in, previ in the previous election but just one woman candidate in 2023. We understood that there were multiple barriers to women's political representation, such as cultural biases, targeted abuse and lack of resources. This issue will also be analyzed in our final report and recommendations made there. We welcome the inclusion of the 10% youth quota to the National Assembly. At the local government level, we also welcome the introduction of a 30% quota for women. It's commendable that there is a seat for persons with disabilities in the Senate. Additionally, ballot, the ballot tem templates were provided for visually impaired voters at polling stations, and ZEC had also accommodated with wheelchair-bound voters. On arrival, at their various deployment stations, our teams visited provincial and district level ZEC offices, local police stations, and in some cases, the local offices of some of the political parties, among others. Most of the polling stations have been set up by the eve of the elections. Materials have been received uh, by polling officials, and uh, polling officials as well as the police who are post, and in some cases, party agents who are also present. On the eve of elections, we found that ZEC appeared to be prepared. Our observers reported that the opening of polls commenced on time in most of the polling stations observed, with the exception of Harare Metropolitan Province and Bulawayo Metropolitan Province. Due to the late start of polling in some areas, particularly in Harare and Bulawayo, there were still long queues at some polling stations by 7 p.m., which was a stipulated closing time. In some cases, ballot papers did not arrive until the afternoon, in one instance as late as 7.30 p.m. This could have had an effect on voter turnout in these large urban areas, but also have had an impact on voters, some of whom appeared agitated. We noted from reports that ZEC attributed the delays to the impact of numerous court challenges on the printing process. As mentioned above, we look, further, we look forward to further clarity from ZEC on this issue. It was observed that polling officials were directed to keep polling open for a full 12 hours 
in accordance with the law. We noted the President of Zimbabwe's announcement on the eve of election day, on the evening of election day, in which the polling period was extended in the affected areas um, for the elections of President, National Assembly, and local councillors. The consequence of the above was that the affected polling officials and agents had to work in excess of 24 hour shifts. Polling officials we spoke to stated that they did not receive any notification from ZEC that they, could be, they would be rotated at any point. The welfare of polling staff and agents therefore became an issue of concern to us, and this could have potentially impacted the accuracy and speed of the counting process. Nonetheless, we were impressed by the resilience, dedication, and proficiency of polling staff despite the very long hours. In addition, we note that voting after that may have been a barrier to women voters, the elderly, and people with disabilities. Given the issues with delayed starts to polling in a number of areas, we could have welcomed a more robust and timely communication strategy from ZEC on election day. Voter lists and verification at many polling stations, voters took it upon themselves to check their names on the voter roll affixed to the tent, building, or nearby roll before joining the queue. The provenance of the voter rolls is commendable, and this along with the mobile SMS code provided by SEC. Maybe white officials recorded very few instances of voters having to be redirected to correct polling stations. That said, the mobile SMS code appeared to work well prior to election day, but not on the day itself. Observers noted that the list the, 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 the names of some voters who had confirmed their polling station via mobile phone using the SMS code did not appear on the lists on election day. Our observers reported that the voter verification process was smooth and, proceed, and proceeded in line with the prescribed process. Polling procedures in those areas not affected by the late provision of ballots, generally speaking, all pre-poll procedures were adhered to and polling staff seemed well trained. Polling staff was efficient. On the electoral process, from our own observations, there was a peaceful report that members of the organization were allegedly recording the names and ID numbers of voters. We also noted that members of FAS were conducting citizen observation. The presence fueled allegations of voter intimidation. Party agents of the main political parties were present in all polling stations observed. Whilst they lacked copies of the voter roll, they were nonetheless diligent to the, to the extent uh, evident uh, in the conduct of their duties. Security was present at every polling station observed. In most areas, they were professional and obstructive and carried out their duties diligently. We note that in some instances, security personnel were situated inside polling stations, although they did not appear to interfere or to be an intrusive presence. Close of call. The count was a detailed and thorough process carried out by professional, dedicated, and resilient polling officials in the presence of attentive party agents and observers. The close and count followed due process for the most part with a high degree of transparency. However, it was noted that at some stations, particularly those in tents, lighting was insufficient, which may have delayed the counting process. Arrest and detention of local observers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are following with concern the course of the detention of 41 local civil society observers during a series of raids in Harare on the night of the 23rd of August, including at this hotel. We hope that the legal justification for, the, for their detention will become clearer as further information comes to light, and we will definitely be interested in that information and hope that it can be provided to us soon. In conclusion, our overall assessment of the voting process is that it was well conducted and peaceful. 
However, there exist a number of significant issues that impact on the credibility, transparency, and inclusivity of the process. It has been an honor for us to be part of this important process. As we have already noted, this was a critical moment for the people of Zimbabwe. Elections are an opportunity for you to choose your leaders, but to do so in a peaceful environment, in which the rights of all citizens are respected and the role of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission and other key participants in the electoral process is respected and is supported. I would therefore encourage all political leaders and their supporters to continue exercising patience and restraint in the days ahead to allow the result process to be brought to its natural conclusion in accordance with legal provisions and all the laws of Zimbabwe. The Commonwealth family continues to stand in solidarity with you, the people of Zimbabwe. We wish you well and thank you very much for all the attention that we've received since our arrival here in Zimbabwe. And finally, I'd just like to thank the members of the Commonwealth Observer Group that in fact this was a question that we have responded to uh, on several occasions and indicated that uh, the two processes were quite separate. Um, the resettlement of uh, Zimbabwe to the Commonwealth is something that has been ongoing for a while. Uh, there is a process that is uh, in place. Three missions have already taken place. The missions have been given the government and all other stakeholders, uh, including uh, members of the opposition party but also the media. Uh, and that process will really continue. Uh, we were invited by the government of Zimbabwe uh, to come and observe uh, the, uh, the elections. And we'll be issuing a uh, final report. We have issued a few other statements, the preliminary statement that we issued. And we have also issued uh, this preliminary report, uh, this preliminary report today. Uh, we will issue a final report on the, on the elections. But I do not think that we should confuse the two, the two processes. Um, the real circuit of Zimbabwe is not just about uh, uh, the elections, it's actually much more uh, broad. Um, and uh, we look at very, very many different uh, uh, issues and uh, before Zimbabwe is real circuit. But can you say it was fair? Uh, well, I, if you heard what I said, uh, I said that uh, uh, the atmosphere was peaceful, uh, that the conditions were, were in place. Uh, for a critical election to be to be held. Uh, I think that the process, the election process is not over yet. Voting has taken place. Uh, we wait for the all the other uh, processes uh, to actually take place before we issue our final report, which will give you a clear indication of how we have categorized the elections of the